Srinivas, sorry for the delay. Okay. Sorry, sorry Srinivas, I'm going to leave, but I have to go, and it's been great meeting you. Thank you, Dr. Sena Ratan, everyone in Sri Lanka, for having me on this podium, yeah? Thank you. Enjoy. Okay, Bye. thank you. Bye. Yeah, uh, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yes, uh, Dr. Dr. Srinivas, you please start the presentation. So are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear yeah, me? Yeah, very, very much, yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Vazira, sir, and thanks all the members of Sri Lankan uh, Cardiac Society. And uh, what I was asked to speak, uh, sh share some of the experiences of the nightmares, uh, complications, which often are uh, learning experiences for all of us. Uh, after hearing to Kirti, I removed uh, one case of uh, that stuck rotobar here, sure enough. I will uh, try to touch upon some of the other things uh, in uh, classification. This slide uh, brings uh, best wishes from Apollo Group of Hospitals. And then we are very fortunate to have this tie-up with Kadivas Research Foundation. All of you know this great man, Dr. Leon and Dr. Sushil Kodali, where we share our experiences, learn a lot. Learning has to be mutual. And then we can always learn from other mistakes so that you should not be committing the same type of uh, things. That's how the sessions of sharing our uh, experiences, is, I feel, is very important. And I should congratulate and thank uh, Dr. Vazir and all others for uh, helping this and uh, making our colleagues learn this. So coming to the complications uh, of PCI, I, as I was told that uh, slightly I can take 30 minutes time, I thought of adding some more. And uh, acute complications, it could be non-cardiac complications like vascular access problems, or thromboembolic complications, or contrast-induced uh, nephropathy and uh, radiation injuries, these things. We will not deal with this. So coming to the cardiac complications, uh, it could be just non-coronary again. It could be arrhythmias, tamponade, myocardial infarction, hypotension happening. Or the coronaries, most commonly what we have seen is one of the important ones are the perforations, which you are all worried of. Other times, a dissection and acute closure of the arteries and thrombosis and uh, side branch occlusions, uh, spasms. Sometimes, uh, this concertina affects lead to pseudo lesions. Another important worry is uh, not only the coronary dissections, but aortic dissections could happen. And then stuck foreign material, stuck bursts and equipment loss, uh, like uh, stents getting stuck or uh, lost. So, we'll try to see. Uh, try to uh, concentrate and see how to be prepared for complications. We have to be ourselves, keep ourselves healthy, keep our knowledge and uh, share our experiences and uh, keep uh, in discipline and keep calm to handle such complications always. Now that you know that complication has happened, what next? So we should always call for help and uh, manage yourself and uh, don't become restless. Uh, don't become agitated. Stay calm, in control, kind because uh, open to communication. And uh, if you are less panicky and if you maintain your calmness, you can tackle any sort of complications. Then if you see, now we'll go on to this type of a complication like perforation. I would uh, try to deal with uh, some wire perforation, other things, not rotor, which are already shown by Dr. Keithi. So perforations are classified basically mechanism of location, either large vessel or distal vessel or the collateral or septals. Because uh, if the proximal vessels are perforated, it has different implications compared to the distal smaller vessels. Other type of classification is depending upon the severity of perforation. It is at least one, just uh, contrast projects little, at least two is a little more formation happens. And then if it is a uh, three and four, the cavity spilling happens. And the type five in this is a distal coronary perforation. But it's also important for us to learn how to prevent perforations. So patient factors, generally elderly people, Female frail patients, we need to be gentle. And uh, sometimes uh, SES patients, acute MIs, and uh, lesion factors like calcific lesions, tortuous lesions, tapered vessels. And if you're not conscious of the sizes of the vessels and use a bigger balloons, I think that's what has happened. You could lead to some of these perforations and ruptures. And always uh, keep a conscious effort and maintain the material and balloon selection size of one ish to one. High pressure is okay, but uh, then the sizing of the balloon has to be under control. OPN, even if you go to 30, 40 atmosphere, is okay as long as your quarter size is less than the artery. And never remove the balloon out totally before you check with a contrast puff. That is, again, I feel is important because after high pressure inflation, if there's immediate uh, some small leak or anything, you can take the balloon back and seal the perforation. Hydrophilic wires tend to slip. You need to control the wires very well and uh, to power, avoid distal perforations. And stiffer wires like CTO wires also could cause trouble. 
So that's important for us to avoid, know how to avoid perforations. And coming to management algorithms of uh, provided we have developed a perforation, the universal algorithm of coronary perforation is what is actually inflate the balloon where you had a perforation and intravenous fluids, vasopressor support, and if required, immediately pericardial synthesis and uh, keep yourself uh, surgeon informed. Then there is a persistent extravasation. And then uh, depending upon uh, what type of scenario you're dealing with, whether it's a large vessel or a distal vessel, the large vessel you have, again, uh, you keep a balloon inflated and try to close it with a covered stent. The distally, you can uh, close up the vessel with fats and coils. And then if it's continued to extravasate, and then probably even after the uh, reversing anticoagulation, that some of the patients will go for surgery. So as you said, the type 1 type of perforations are very minimal. If the patient is stable, you can keep a watch and give a low-pressure inflation. Most of the times it seals. But it's also important to watch this post-procedure. Immediately it could decrease, perforation could be sealed. But again, uh, it could a little start a little after a while. So it is immediate, immediate important to have echo also to be available. And if it starts, then you could uh, drain it uh, in the ICU. I'll show you one such case example. This pressure monitoring which you have is important to observe. Normal pressures, as you know, it's like this. But if the patient is about to develop paradoxes, this pulses paradoxes type of pressure indicates that there is a tamperant about to happen in this patient before the patient's pressure further falls down. So it's very important to keep a watch on the pressure trace what you're getting. I will show you one case example where uh, this patient had uh, occlusion totally and the other problems were is a branch which is coming at the site of occlusion, septal and diagonal. Uh, as usual, because it was, uh, we thought it could be crossed uh, with the filler XT type of swad, the, it was going to diagonal, we left there. And then we took a balloon support there. Uh, then uh, then uh, what we need to understand is, I have told in the guidewires uh, talk in the morning, once you have a balloon support, the, art, the wires become more stiffer and you need to be more careful. Though we were uh, careful to handle it, initially we thought it has went all right. But again, uh, once the stent is done, everything went well. But if you have see carefully, there is a small leak-like thing which is happening there. We did watch that for some time, and then it uh, did not increase. And patient was all right hemodynamically. We did watch, and there is no collection of fluid. We shifted the patient with a careful watch. You see, initially, immediately there is the RX collapse, and then we are watching further. There is a small fluid developing anterior to RV also. That's where we decided to get him back and uh, do the tapping, and then uh, patient improved later. Then uh, that is a, if a balloon if perforation is a little more bigger, especially in the left main. You need to immediately use an inflated balloon, and probably such of the patients will go for uh, uh, covered stents. So the same thing which could happen with the proximal major uh, coronary arteries. Then uh, that other as the perforations become more bigger, type three type of perforations, patients tend to become more hemodynamic unstable. I need to inform our surgical colleagues too and uh, try to seal it up with an uh, appropriate size, the covered stent. And then probably uh, when you are using it, you can actually use the same guide catheter or you can have a ping pong guide technique. So if you have a bigger guide catheter, seven French or eight French, it will help you to go through the same guide. Otherwise, you can take a double guide technique, like what you have developed, perforation, keep the balloon sealed it there and take another guide to another uh, axis. Then uh, keep it and then take the, uh, in the, once you deflate the wire, immediately pass the wire and then take the uh, covered stent there without wasting much time because each uh, second, few seconds, the patients tend to become immediately abnormal, especially with uh, large perforations. You have uh, two types of uh, covered stents available, graft master and papyrus. And graft master, as you are all experienced, it is actually sandwich stent design. It is a little more bulky. It can't be used. It has to have a six French guide in the various sizes are available. The bigger ones actually need a seven French guide. This papyrus is a good stent, which from Biotronic, I would recommend all of you to have it on shelf. It goes to five French and is a polyurethane and it is a low profile and it helps and uh, it actually has reasonable good results and follow up. This is a cartoon which shows uh, with a single guide. How do you do uh, the, uh, the take the stent? The ping pong guides, uh, then besides once you keep the balloon, and you take the covered stent besides it and inflate it once you get the balloon back. Such so sort of a huge, horrible perforations like what you see it communicating the cavity. Then, especially post surgery, they get collected. You, they don't give time, and they need surgical co- uh, cooperation, surgical colleague help there. As the perforations become bigger, sometimes uh, it is okay, but sometimes uh, you can actually distal wire perforations, especially with the uh, with the wires which are actually. Uh, more slippery, then you could sometimes uh, get it uh, sealing off the perforation with a coil, uh, which is what is uh, seen here. Then uh, if there's other particles like uh, various things which are available in the market, 
uh, fat, coils, thrombus, microspheres, all of them. The fat is universally available. The difficulty is visibility. Controlled delivery has a little difficult and it goes through any microcatheter. So we need to have experience uh, to have using it. I'll show you one case example where in spite of perforation, you could still continue and uh, you know, do the job like how it was shown in one of the cases. The case history is not important, but RCA was totally occluded here. Then uh, we initially try to do, do choice floppy and crossy type of wires. Then, then that's where I think uh, some perforation has happened when inflation is happening. Then we took a Gaia type of wire. Then we took a, uh, the arteries could be crossed. As the patient was behaving reasonably okay, then we decided to um, stent to that part. And after the stenting, as somebody was asking, even after stenting with a routine stent, with approximate uh, dilatations with minimal leak there, then probably sometimes patient could tolerate. So never panic when there is myocardial staining. As long as the patient is immunodynamically stable, if possible, try to finish the coronal stenting. And then also required, probably you could be doing the tapping. I think that's a, a thing for about perforations. Now with this, again, I will take another 5-10 minutes to explain to you another some of the interesting things which I got into cat lab. Uh, this, I recommend all of you to go through this manual of perforation of coronary intervention complications by Bilakis. It's quite good. Now we go on to stent loss and uh, stent under expansion. If you have to see, this calcium is again our enemy. And whenever there is calcium, if you have not prepared the bed well, the history is not important, but patient had a triple vessel calcific disease, but also had a stroke. In the post-COVID era, they didn't want to operate, so I think a uh, patient wanted a triple vessel stenting. See it everywhere, there are calcific vessels, the LAD calcium, OM calcium, and then uh, long segment lesions. And then if you see it, the RCA also was calcific. We tackled the left one. For the sake of time, I've uh, I removed those pictures. The left one was okay. Then you see the RCA, the calcific lesions. Uh, then we initially took a regular wire and dilated with two 2.5 mm balloon. We thought... Uh, we did reasonably okay pre-dilatation, but there was still some indentation. But you see the later generation uh, regulating stents in 2.538 of expedition uh, tracked quite easily through the lesion, and then we deployed it. So, but there was a, uh, once you notice, as you notice there, there's stent under expansion there. And then uh, we, instead of coming in entire thing back, we kept the balloon there. And we also sealed the proximal portion with a guide not to injure the proximal ostium, which was not stented. And we did a high pressure dilatation, but still it did not yield. Then later on, we took another high pressure 2.75 dil dilatation we did, but still the residual waste was persisting. So uh, th then we, we had multiple attempts. Then I think uh, uh, the, we were trying to image to this, this point of time that the entire wire slipped out. So that is the problems uh, you develop. And then once you have taken, we rewired it and then took a OPN uh, uh, NC balloon. And then uh, we also used a buddy wire, the Grand Slam wire for the extra support. And then uh, then see this. This is what a poor man's eyewash type. It's a stent twist or boost. Still, the residual narrowings were persisting in spite of the post dilatation of the smaller balloons. Here, we took OPN balloon of 40. It opened at 40 atmospheres. And then uh, you see that last it, it gave up and now it became smooth. So without uh, the preparation, if you do, so the later generation stent could track in spite of not opening the vessel, but it's always good to prepare the bed well. And now that artery is open, then we dilated the entire vessel with a bigger sized balloon. And then that is the, that is the final result. And I see this, uh, once it is open, it becomes smooth. So that's a stent whose appearance. So then we did, we could do OCT now imaging uh, easily. Then uh, uh, that's the final result uh, of the artery. Then... Uh, we did a OCT, and then uh, for the sake of time, I'm running, not running the detailed OCT here, but we had a good uh, result. And uh, areas at the lesion point and proximally distally were quite good, and we had a uniform stent expansion. The word about calcific nodule, what we learned in it is such sort of eccentric calcific nodule sometimes could be difficult to be dealt with. And probably OCT scores compared to IVAS and other things in imaging this. And uh, I'm not going to details of each of the advantages and disadvantages, but the calcium the thickness and the length of the calcium, the more, all the more, the more deeper, then if all of them are uh, more um, longer and deeper and then more than 180 degrees, you give a maximum score of four, which needs maximum bed preparation. So if it's superficial and uh, where the wire cannot go, then probably you would rotablation, deeper calciums, probably you would scoring cutting balloons and opium balloon and calcific nodules and then uh, more of what 
problematic situations nowadays we use ivl balloon for the management so depending on the plaque if it is a um, small soft plaques we direct stent it but if it is calcific lesions then you need to take the help of uh, uh, more uh, opian balloons and then ivl balloon so if a uh, critical stenosis no balloon tracking possible we do take a rotoplation now we also have laser ablation uh, possible then you t- follow it up with the non uh, nc balloons and uh, regular balloon dilatations if a calcium is uh, not critical the allo nc balloon try to balloon dilate with nc mild calcium is open moderate calcium is again you know, it might need opn so if you can use a, a oct again it always gives you to plan your procedure well what is the equipment to be used and finally you can document the result that uh, the procedure is done well so that's how imaging helps and makes our lives easy in spite of dealing with a calcific disease uh, what about uh, again another type of complication that was stent under expansion what i've shown now i'll show you one or two uh, uh, things why stents lo- get lost in this so stents lost uh, happens because of tortuosities and calcifications and poor vessel preparations so like if you don't prepare the well push the stuff inside it gets dislodged stent delivery through another stent and if you if you don't uh, stent the distal vest distal stent first in the proximal stent uh, later to do the reverse sometimes the stent could dislodged direct stenting and the small five french guides again could be problem forceful Uh, withdrawals again is a problem use of guide extension catheters you should be careful while withdrawing it back sometimes stents could get stuck there and uh, uh, always it is important to prevent problems happening in this avoid direct stenting if possible do, do a meticulous preparation stent from distal to proximal guide extensions uh, again for a challenging delivery avoid very forceful pushing this is not area where we need to show our forces and if you are using the guide extension you need to handle it separately and if resistance is felt stop withdrawing the stent into guide and avoid small french catheters again they tend to get into trouble inspect stents before you deliver and reinsert that's what i'll show you an example here now if you analyze what is the cause why the stent not getting delivered whether it is poor guide support or inadequate lesion preparation or tortuosity you have different methods of approaches what i have mentioned here probably if it is tortuosity you can have a body wire or more stronger wires or a guide extension catheters whereas if it is poor guide support probably you can take a more uh some support uh, guides and probably have a anchor balloon or guide extensions and lesion preparation suppose if it is you need to prepare it well with a better calcium and breaking technology like ivl if you image it you know that this is a problem there's a bend there and calcium and especially when there's bend and calcium that's the worst thing it may not uh, be delivered and if it is only a tortuosity the body wire and other things and taking little short of the stents also could help so it's always better to analyze what is the cause for the stent problems uh, creating with the stent delivery and accordingly act they see this so that's what i was telling you you need to inspect the stent before you push it back some side the stent starts get distorted so in that case the probably you should instead of pushing it you try to take another stent so if your stent is lost see where is the location of stent sometimes uh, it gets out of coronary somewhere it gets embolized in the periphery if it is in small peripheral artery where there is no problem you can leave it but if it is again the major vessels are sometimes in the aorta they tend to uh, uh, snare it if it is intracoronary if the retrieval uh, is needed or not you can see it again a uh, wire is uh, still maintained that is stent balloon comes back but still still on the wire then probably you can take a small ba- balloon through inside and insert the balloon and get it back or snare it and avoid a, t- a twin viral technique i'll show you one or two cartoons and example of that and then later on again you could after successful retrieval then you can treat the patient then a wire position if is maintained or lost then you wire it and probably crush the stent to the wall with another stent and deploy it this is what is uh, stelling as a stent retriever small balloon technique the balloon has come back while you're drawing it and then you pass another thin balloon the low profile balloon and ringon plus balloon is quite good and dry rail they inflate it distally and try to get everything back so then you could this is how it comes the 1.15 balloon inflated it can get the entire stent back after it gets lost you need to have this in the shelf uh, especially these snares are different from the peripheral snares these are coronary snares and amplats uh, who's next snare and sometimes if you don't have snares we could indigenize uh with the wire with taking a long length and using the guide uh, catheter you can prepare snares artificially if the still guide is on as i mentioned you can use a snare and get it out or by wire wrapping technique you can get the stent out then if you have a guide extension and then wrap that also can be done if you have a small biopsy like thing forceps uh, you can also catch it gradually and get it out but you need to be careful not to injure the vessel 
And one case I will show, and then I think I'm nearing 20 minutes, I'll stop. This is a 20, 55-year-old male calcific patient. This is, again, post-renal transplant, presents with recurrent LVF. And if you see it, there is a tight disease in uh, LCX and also tight disease uh, in the critical disease in the LAD there. As usual, the patient already experienced the renal transplant. Surgeons were not keen, and he wanted to avoid the procedure. And that's where I avoided multiple steps. But there, where was creating trouble was the lack of support. And then I think, uh, that, uh, sorry for that. I think time is uh, also up. And then uh, we could uh, successfully get it back and then uh, uh, completed the procedure uh, successfully. With this, I think I'll stop. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you. What was it? Questions from the audience. Before I take it, what is the COVID situation there, sir? LT and control physical meeting started. Congratulations for the hybrid meeting from you, all of you. COVID is under control. Any questions from the audience? I was asking Ponamia, Kirti, if you had a main left main rup rupture, how are you going to handle it? So this is the so final the result of that, which I last uh, uh, that uh, thing and you tackled it, the calcium thing. And uh, thank you all, and you can watch all the TCT proceedings in the TCT India dot in and the VOD format. Thank you. So, uh, the question what you asked, sir, is basically if you have a left main uh, perforation or tamperant, how will you handle it? These are the situations I think where you need to act uh, immediately, and then probably uh, that's how the, you inflate the balloon uh, the, with the, without uh, losing much of time. And then uh, you put a, get an alternative axis and then cover it with a covered stent. Generally, in the proximal vessels, left main or anything, uh, the covered stent deployment won't be a problem because it is just proximal. You can uh, place the covered stent, even the graft master type of stent also would go easily. And But only thing where we need to act and swift is uh, don't take the balloon out totally. That's why I always said if you are giving a high-pressure balloon, check a puff and before you take the balloon out. So do not be wasting too much of time. And then uh, try to seal it off. As long as the vessel is sealed off with the balloon, there's no problem. Things are under control for you. And uh, put an alternative guide axis, especially with the left main, so they tend to uh, go into hemodynamic instability within no time. And they take a covered stent through the second guide and then uh, deflate this balloon and immediately place a covered stent and inflate it. And most of the times you could save the patient. Hope I'm yes, of, can you hear me? Do you reverse heparin effect in case of perforation? No, at least try to do in a, what type of uh, measures that you take. You are proceeding with the uh, same anticoagulation level or do you do anything to uh, Yeah, that's a good uh, question. It? That's a good question for take of time. Yeah, that's a good question for take of time. I think I didn't go into it. But basically... If you feel the vessel perforation is uh, large and in spite of all your efforts, it's not sealing off, I think uh, we tend to reverse uh, with the protomain and half dose and then probably, but if you are in the left main space and we're in the proximal uh, LAD, if you tied over with, for some time, generally the heparin effects goes off and then probably you can uh, avoid uh, giving protomain. But if it continuously leaks and patient, and patient is still hemodynamically unstable, then we do use half dose uh, protomain to reverse it. And regarding the anti-platelet, uh, again, post-procedure, uh, again, if it is a very distal, too distal wire perforation or the sealed off with a coil or fat, there's no problem. But if you have uh, sealed off with a larger covered stent, you need to continue uh, with the antiplatelet. So we tend to give one antiplatelet drug, I think clopidogrel or ticagrel whatever you're using, and uh, avoid giving 12. And uh, initially, again, we need to have a close watch. 
in the ICU setups because some who's may be there and the patient might need uh, repeated uh, help of uh, uh, pericardial taps to keep the hemodynamics. Uh, and then once uh, after some time it seals off, then the antiplatelets uh, will be tolerated okay. Okay, uh, in the absence of questions, uh, we can conclude this uh, symposium. And on behalf of uh, Sri Lanka College of Cardiology, I would like to thank you, uh, thank Dr. Srinivas Kumar and Dr. Kirti Punamia for their wonderful input uh, to this session. And uh, we had uh, a good uh, interactive session with uh, very uh, advanced knowledge and how to prevent and how to deal with this uh, very common complications you can come across at any time. But thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We'll keep in touch. Bye-bye.